Okay, so I want to talk about a couple things we do in the way of collecting fertility for the garden and also mulch. Uh, one of which is gathering leaves. So I'm standing on top of a hoop of leaves. We usually have about a dozen of these around the garden in different locations. We put the hoops where the leaves pile up, where it's easy to collect them. Which is, you know, along the stream channel, behind the buildings usually, where the wind blows them and leaves them. And right here, uh, this roadside ditch. It's a dead end road and it ends just up here, so I feel okay about collecting leaves from here. I wouldn't necessarily get them from any roadside ditch. Some places, you know, in the city you can pick up bags of leaves for free, but I'm not going to drive somewhere to get them. Uh, some cities will deliver leaves, although urban street leaves can be full of a lot of trash. I'd be a little ambivalent. So we gather up the leaves and we pour them into these hoops and we pack them in. If you just have a heap of leaves, it'll rot down and there won't be anything much left at all after a couple of years, except some sticks. So we want this to, uh, to be just about as full when it's rotten as it is right now. We actually got quite a lot more room to put in here. So these will, in the course of a couple of years, these will break down to something very much like peat moss. However, we can speed up the process um, by adding a nitrogen source. namely urine. So I use all the urine I generate for one thing or another. It's a hugely valuable resource that goes to waste. Enough urines flush down the toilet to grow the entire American corn crop, which is the biggest source of artificial fertilizer. Uh, in the summer, it mostly goes on to the compost piles. It provides the nitrogen for the compost piles. But in the winter, uh, I don't have any compost piles going. So, voila, leaf piles, because we're usually raking them in the autumn. So I just dump urine onto these piles. Uh, every so often. I'm not sure I could really put on too much. Maybe, but it's a lot of leaves. So here's what it looks like after uh, about three months of breaking down. So it's starting to get there, as you can see, but not entirely. And this is after roughly a year. This is pretty close to being peat moss. This is good enough. We, so we sift this material and use it instead of peat moss in our potting mixes. We make a particular potting mix for uh, the woodland plants, which is based on leaf mold and shredded bark and perlite. Leaf mold is the key ingredient. We can also just simply use it for mulch. Uh, if you want to sift it and use it as an ingredient, uh, it's worthwhile having as few twigs in it as possible. So as you rake your leaves, toss out the twigs. If you're just going to use it for mulch, it really doesn't matter too much. You can leave the twigs in. Here's a lot of twigs that came in along the roadside ditch. Uh, another use for the urine, when I have extra, is to combine with something else I have a lot extra of, which is wood ashes, since we heat with wood. So wood ashes are high in potassium and they're rather alkaline. Urine is high in nitrogen and it's acidic, is my understanding. So if you put the two together, uh, you'll come up with, who knows exactly what you'll come up with, it'd be nice to get it tested, but um, what you might come up with is potassium nitrate also known as saltpeter, a key ingredient for gunpowder. And in fact, there's a humorous song from the Civil War exhorting the Southern women to save their urine for the cause, because uh, they had to manufacture their own gunpowder. So I saturate the ashes with urine and leave them for a couple of months. Like I dump in as much urine as, as it'll take, you know, until it's just shy of being uh, swimming and let it do its whatever chemical combining it wants to do for a couple of months. Then I'll dump it out onto a tray and spread it out in the sun and get it dry. You gotta get it pretty gloppy. Uh, 
obviously, when it's fresh. Oh, I forgot to bring down the trowel. Well, here's some gloppy wood ashes that are in the process of being soaked. And those are probably ready to spread out in the sun. We'll get them dry. So that's when I make my fertilizer mix, which is this right here. Uh, that's my N and my K. And so then I add bone meal and rock phosphate to that, which comes sort of pelletized. I have to buy that stuff. And a few things for trace elements like green sand and uh, azomite, and then I might put in some kelp meal, various ingredients we add, but at least 50% of my fertilizer mix is this urine wood ashes. So I got a notion to Google urine and wood ashes just to see what I'd get. And uh, what you get is the same news story, I don't know how many times, at least 100, maybe 500 which has to do with uh, these researchers, I think it was in Sweden, you can look it up. They ran an experiment where they used urine and wood ashes mixed like this to fertilize tomatoes. And they said it went just fine. It was as good as the commercial fertilizer. And then every newspaper editor in America picked it up so he could write a cute headline to this story with like some kind of pun on pee or urine or something. So you just keep Googling and Googling and you'll never find out anything else about urine and wood ashes except this one experiment. This goes on and on, uh, but it works. Anyway, it's been proven to work in Sweden on tomatoes. And you can try it in your own garden. Everybody's got urine and a lot of us have wood ashes too.